So this uh, video is instructions on how to use a great online tool called Storyboard That. So you start out by dragging down the backgrounds and you can adjust them uh, to make them day or night, snowing, raining. Um, you can just edit the scene by clicking on it. It's very straightforward and self-explanatory. So here you can see I made it winter, now I made it nighttime, now I made it snowing. And you can pretty much adjust the scene for any story you want to tell. Uh, but a lot of times just looking at the pictures and the different types of scenes available gives you ideas for stories. Um, you can copy and paste a background so that you can have the same background in several scenes. You can adjust the lighting. Uh, you can make it um, black and white, just a, a plain line drawing with no color in it. There's a lot of different adjustments. I highly suggest that you start playing around with the different possibilities. Um, and you can take a scene and make it identical, but in the first scene there's a blue sky, in the second scene it's nighttime, and the third scene it's raining, and it's the same scene. Um, there's a lot of things you can do as far as that goes. So now, uh, on to the characters. The characters that you pull down are going to be bare bones, no color in them, and then you get to pick the skin color, the hair color, the eye color, the color of the clothing, etc. And the nice thing about this is that you can also select the pose and facial expression of the character, whether they're walking, uh, what arms, what uh, position their arms or head are in, um, whether they're standing or sitting. And once you have selected all that and selected the colors you want, you can duplicate the character and drag them into the next scene. You don't have to do the same thing all over and over again for the subsequent scenes. Uh, you can also pull out the corner and change the size of the character so you can put them appropriately in the background or foreground and adjust the size accordingly so they look right. Uh, you can overlap different characters and even uh, flip them horizontally so that they're facing in the other direction or tilt them by dragging that little dragger on the very top. So as you can see, I'm making the one girl like she's sitting down, um, changing her size, putting her farther away in the background, making her sitting on the rock, and I'm even tilting her slightly so that she actually is angled properly so she looks like she's sitting on the rock. Um, so you can make some very convincing scenes with some very simple tools. You don't actually need to have a drawing ability to set up these scenes. And it's a great way to just get your story down quickly and organize your thoughts quickly. Um, now I'm going to take my characters, I'm going to duplicate them, and I'm going to then bring them into the next scene, change their facial expressions, change the positions of their arms, make them standing instead of sitting, and continue to tell my story. Now there's a lot of different characters here, including... Uh, mythological creatures and monsters. So if you have a story in mind, uh, even though what you're going to be creating is not quite right, uh, let's say there's a monster in your story and it's not going to look like one of these monsters, you can get a close approximation because it's only a storyboard. It's just so you can get your or organize your thoughts and tell your story. So you might have a completely different monster in mind um, but this one will act as a stand-in for the monster that you're going to make in your real story, uh, just so you can lay out the story and, and figure out what happens first and next. Um, in this case, I actually decided to combine two characters. I made the one monster overlapping a butterfly, and I kind of changed the angle so it looked like the butterfly's wings were actually the wings of the red monster. So by doing that, I was able to get a little creative, but it's it's actually not necessary because a storyboard isn't uh, a complete work of art. It's just a way of visually organizing your thoughts so that you can later make an animation or write a story or write a screenplay and, and you'll kind of know what happens first, second, third, and fourth. It's a good way to visualize your ideas. There's that old expression, a picture's worth a thousand words, by actually trying to tell your story visually without words. You think about things like facial expressions, arm movements, head movements, body gestures, 
um, positioning, size. Uh, it forces you to think about the ways that you can tell a story without words uh, just by using simple things like uh, arm position, facial expression, etc. So in this last scene, I'm going to actually make the girl look like she's um, sitting on the monster and the one girl is looking very shocked and I guess the story is that the one princess tamed the monster and now he's her obedient pet. So there you have it. The app is set up to be very user friendly. You may not know exactly how to use something but you just click on a button and you try different things, play with it and you will figure it out very 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 quickly. It's actually meant so that younger children can use it. So my high school students should have absolutely no trouble figuring it out and creating their storyboards and handing them in. The app is free, allowing you to create two six panel storyboards a week, or there's a paid version that you can get that is unlimited.